Luna Bono. Please forgive me. I'm sorry. Thank you. I love you. I love you. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. Thank you. Thank you. Please forgive me. I'm sorry. I love you. I love you. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. Thank you. Ho Opono Bono. I love you. Please forgive me. Thank you. I'm sorry. There's many different ways of channeling this energy. This mantra is an amazing mantra for you to work with, to talk to yourself, to honor yourself, to say, please forgive me. I'm sorry. Thank you. I love you. Ho Opono Bono. Jai Bhagwan. Jai Bhagwan. Namaste. Trina Christine Mason here. Channeling you divine energy, divine love for free. Welcome to my free YouTube channel. I'm very grateful that I'm able to still be here. As you know, many of us are being wiped off the interface, so there's not a whole lot of consistency, you can say. So that's why I've attempted to create these alternate portals where you can pay to be a part of my world and my life and where like we're guaranteed to connect in these places, you know what I mean? And I'll attempt to always connect and to reach the masses in any way, shape, or form that spirit guides me that is appropriate. And I understand I am presently protected by divine source and that there is a divine plan that is also part of divine source's plan. However, there's many junctions at hand. And um, sometimes things need to die or we need to uh, let things go. We need to open our hand in order to receive. You know what I mean? Like, um, when I say die, I mean like sometimes a part of the self needs to die. You know what I mean? Like maybe like you have this belief system that I'm no good and I'm terrible. And um, that needs to die. Like it's not true. You need to recognize how recognize, recognize how wonderful and how magical and how pure and how proper you are and yeah notice all your flaws and love yourself be like yeah man i'm messy man i love to be messy like for me i'm like yeah that's right i love to pick my nose if you don't like that i pick my nose and you just stay away from me because i am a nose picker and i like having a clean nose and i blow rap out my nose and hey it's none of your business what i do either you love me wholeheartedly for all that i am or you only love me conditionally or on like certain conditions if i love you you love me this is not love this is control this is manipulation this is improper i had one of the best days i've ever had of my life at my job and i do not mean how much money i've made okay i'm talking about that god has sent me some of the most sacred and holy people that i needed to work with and that needed to work with me and god the beauty and the irony like there are some things that i just couldn't take and i couldn't contain and um I did my very best, that's all I can say. So I'll say ho'oponopono to those, you know what I mean? Please forgive me, I'm sorry, thank you. Please forgive me for all the energy that I couldn't take on. Please forgive me for the energy that I couldn't give that I don't have access to yet, or that I don't feel safe, etc. Please understand the process and the divine integration that is at hand. Um, so all that is going on. I care for you so much. I literally give you all of me to the point where I feel depleted at times. And yes at times I'm very upset with myself or it's set with God that I'm allowed and this is going on okay and um, I talk to my cells and my feelings and I attempt to connect and I'll admit sometimes I really struggle to do that which is how I started doing the business that I'm doing where I provide this safe space where you can go within and really honor your feelings and really know what's going on and understand quantum mechanics on a higher level God, I, can, I can't even give language to what I did for this child today, this boy. And it was such an honor to work with his energy and to allow him to feel what it's like to connect to his ancestors and to know that they're not really dead and that we don't really die. And for him to really feel it and to really be there and to really process all of this stuff. He had an extensive beauty of his soul, like despite what he has seen and processed, there's so much love. God, I wonder also though to what level there was projection like where he had become me and had been processing me as him and then I might have been interpreting him as me though I understand that Newton's third law and the quantum mechanics that like I wouldn't be able like he would have to recognize himself in me like all these different levels of quantum mechanics I can't even talk okay I'm stuttering um I'm overwhelmed, okay? So um, I'm very glad that my job, Casadega, Purple Rose, has hired a male. I really enjoy this male. I shook his hand and had a great deal of energy spent with this person. And um, God, it was just, I don't even feel 
drained about giving it, you know what I mean? Um, it was just so phenomenal, and I'm so proud to say that we are having our first male reader. I mean, it's not our first male reader, but it's my first male reader since I've been there. You know what I mean? And, like, for me, that's exciting. You know, I know there was a guy there when I, like, right when I was showing up or whatever, like, he was leaving or whatever. But, oh, my God, man. My God. The energy is just so phenomenal. And I know he has a lot of his own stuff, but I, I recognize how we are a family here at the Purple Rose. And it's just so phenomenal to be integrating, to be doing all this work and all this process, and to be a family. And, um... God, I'm just growing so much. Like, I have so many thanks to the Purple Rose, but all I can hear is my boss, Kathy, man. Kathy told me when I first started that this would be a place where I'm planted as a seed and I outgrow or that I go elsewhere. Like, she felt that. She told me that. And, um, honestly, it was really painful to hear, you know what I mean? Because at the time, this was everything I've ever wanted and this was the ultimate accomplishment. And I'm seeing now, like, God is showing me through this job, like, how I'm meant to do this work, even when I'm not at work. You know, work is just teaching me how to integrate and how to play and, and how to know, like, my calling and what we're working with and about colors and the deals of the spectrum and what's really going on here. Okay? And God, I feel really frustrated because now I'm getting visions of a girl that I'm seeing visions of more things that I could have done, you know? But, like, I was having such a hard time breathing and being and and existing and going through this process, she even offered me to have time to like, you know, process and integrate, but spirit in me was like, no, I can take this, but also that's my warrior energy, you know, I don't know when to quit sometimes. <sighs> All I know is I need to practice what I preach, you know what I mean? Like I'm always preaching about breath work, but listen to my breath right now, I'm losing my control, I'm losing my center, and I'm scattered. I'm driving, so I can't really close my eyes and go within, you know? But working at the ashram actually taught me of, like, slightly eyes open, just slightly, just noticing that this energy is there even when I open my eyes. And I would love to record some of Chandra Khan, or I wish I could get my hands on some content, or maybe I could get his consent to record his session the next time I go in. He's there on Thursdays. If you can get to the ashram of the Amron Institute on Thursday nights, um, I believe that's the time he was there. I could be totally screwing up, so don't listen to me. Contact the Amron Institute and get into contact with Chandra Khan. Please go to the ashram. If you're hearing this and if you have the power to get to this ashram, please go to the Amri Yoga Institute. Oh my God, this place changed my life. The power of silence, the power of meditation. Like there's so many easy ways to access the same things, but just some people really walk and be it. You know what I mean? And like they don't have to preach or teach anything because it's there. I'm like, is this my exit? I'm a little thrown off.
apologize. I know I'm coming from a state of sharing with you like all these videos of like just me hiking to the chairs. To the chairs. <laughs> God. Yeah, that's right. Our chairs are made of wood, okay, you guys? You need to reconnect with the trees. <sighs> I'm clear audience. I hear the plants. I hear the spirit. I hear water. I, I can hear as I choose to connect to every little microfiber thing. And so can you. You do not need me. You do not need me. This is nothing new. I am your friend. I am your family. I am your sister. S-I-S-T-A-R. I am your star. Your sister. You can call me your saint. Your guru dev. I don't care what you call me, bro. Straight up. Straight up. I mean, yeah, like my ego likes you call me goddess or master. Or, you know, I, like that was like my ego in the past. I mean, now I think I might appreciate more if you were like, oh, compassionate one. You know what I mean? Speak to me like in this devotional goddess way. Like notice that in me and then notice your power to talk to other people like that. And notice the people that are so far removed from that. And if you talk to them, that they will see the irony and light in their heart load. Oh, compassionate one. Imagine saying that to someone who's really angry. You know what I mean? They're, they're, they are being compassionate too, believe it or not. They're having compassion for their own dang soul and their own dang anger because no one else can feel and know what has happened to them. And, and that can have compassion, so they're going to fight. There is an importance in the purpose for fighting. In the Bhagavad Gita, it talks about this heavily. The way that I've been playing with the Bhagavad Gita is I randomly open the scripture. And I have some friends that are working with the Quran. The Quran is quite amazing too. It's another ancient text, the Book of Mormons. There's so many sacred philosophies hidden in all these texts. And all I can say is close your eyes, have a true intention to connect to God and to truly have a message and point your finger and randomly open that book and then read exactly where you have pointed. And Source will guide you and you can do this in any book, any book. Notice what book you're resisting. Notice what book you're called to. Play with both and learn. Learn by playing and asking questions and then answering the questions by doing, by intimately getting into your body and having this physical experience. There are so many words that you are just barking and begging to be heard. Write them down and then give the person the letter. Give it to them. Or if you need energetic assistance, I can also help transcend this energy. You will know if you're meant to come to me. I'm not here to push sales on you, but yeah, I need to be paid for my time and my energy. Have some empathy. This is what I do. This is what I do. I need to live. I'm hungry. I'm tired. I want to work. I want to work, but I'm tired and I'm hungry and I'm bored. I'm slightly bored. Like I'm literally hungry to service you. Like just know that like I'm looking for energies that people can't contain her and they don't want to live anymore. That they're sick. Like I want to work with you. I want to remind you why you're here. Especially if you're struggling to be alone. Let me be your friend. Let me be your sister. Uh, uh, my boyfriend. I want my boyfriend to be my husband. Like, oh, like my ego wants to attach and like own and manipulate and make this person be with me in this particular way. I just love him so much. I'm so moved by how God and him talks to me and how it comforts me and like how it's there and the timing. I can't take it. The energy is overwhelming. I just love him so much. And it reminds me of my love for Source. And it reminds me of just like, oh, I can't take it. I can't take it. I want to take it. Dude, please let me over. I need to take this exit. Don't be a dick. Thank you. Right, thank you. Your rights. God, don't hate me for needing to exit. Just don't forget that we're not, this is a lesson from my ZTM, and it comes from his friend, man. And it's that we're not just cars. There's people in these cars. There's so much going on, and I just feel like you're not seeing, and I want to share with you. And I feel like there's a lot that my partner isn't seeing, too, that we can't connect because he doesn't see and understand the divine consciousness and some of this stuff. Which is why, like, Source tells me, like, share this with him. But, like, he's also not ready and not willing to integrate and to hear some of this stuff. So that can be really painful and really annoying. But also my love for him just calls me back to go back, go back. But I feel like maybe this is God in me loving him, too. Like, trying to get him to do his purpose of working with, like, like brain surgery, basically. You know what I mean? But there's also these studies. And I'm being given all these people that I wish to connect this man with. And 
because I can't take it. I can't take it because, like, I'm mad that I have no control. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I'm showing the visions, I'm showing the options and the visions and the opportunities. And then, um, like, I'm just, like, chop liver. I'm on the side here. You know what I mean? Um, uh, I'm chop liver, like, when my voice falls onto deaf ears. You know what I mean? Or, like, when I can't do anything. When I give you the wisdom and I tell you, you just need to close your eyes and go within. And then when you just won't do it. Like, you ask me for help and then you won't do the work. You won't go within. You won't listen to the feelings. You won't allow yourself to process your old toxic emotions. You just want to fight and destroy shit. You have no care about reflecting on the other side of the actions. Like, there's no compassion. No compassion. No compassion. I just scream that time and time again. It's like over and over again. No compassion. No compassion. No compassion. God damn. Okay, don't be so selfish and get stuck in your own imprints. Okay, so this girl Chelsea watched my house for 30 days basically, man. And she took care of my cat, she cleaned his poop, but not just that, but she's a sensitive, she's a psychic, she's a very powerful healer. I love this woman so much, and I was called by God to call upon her and to invite her to Namaste. My inner kid wanted to go to Namaste, I have a bunch of food at home. And um, I'm honestly really struggling to eat. I'm, I bought all this organic food. I spent way too much money on groceries. And it's probably all going to go bad. And my inner kid or my ego or dominatrix in me says, send money and like, freaking reimburse me for all this stuff because, God, I suck. <laughs> but, but no, you know, like, it's not really your job to take responsibility for me in that way. But I really do need to learn how to eat and how to cook and how to sit and be with myself and how to be without all this or without this conditioning. You know what I mean? Like, I need to also have compassion for myself and give myself permission to go out to eat to Namaste right now. And since she watched my house, um, Spirit's telling me to treat her and take her out to eat at Namaste. I was originally going to go to Namaste by myself, but I called her and I managed to get her to ask her dad if her dad would drop her off at the restaurant. I'm very fortunate that he's dropping her off and she's patiently waiting for me there. And I'm headed there now as fast as possible. Kitchen closes at 8. You know what I mean? I'm trying to honor this family and come there and give them my business and so they can also get out at their same time. You know what I mean? Um, but also, God, I, I need, I need, I need, I need, okay? I've been longing for Namaste. I haven't had Namaste for 30 days. I'm longing for their chai. I'm longing for the sweet essence and the nectar of uh, Paramal. Paramal is the man who owns Namaste with his wife, Patricia. God, how I love these people. When I was in... Um, uh, when I was out of state, man, and I was in this deep sense of longing for this energy, for this feeling of home that I get when I eat certain Indian food and when I'm with, like, these people that have this, this lineage and the practices and they live and they embody that gentleness and the teachings that are held in the Bhagavad Gita that are held in yoga, that are held in all these religious practices, you know what I mean? And just to connect with people that really live and walk the way, you know, they don't just talk and say, oh, yeah, God this and God that, but no, they literally are walking and living and breathing the path. Okay, and I'm so thankful. Shout out to, to my boy Dallas, okay, and Gilda. And I love this couple so much, and I'm so thankful for the love that they hold for each other in the space that is hell. And I'm so, so blessed to get to know them and to witness this experience and to hold space. And they blessed me with their presence today, and they brought me a person who I think could easily have a job at Casadega, by the way. Easily, Dallas. So if you're hearing this right now, please know that, like, yeah, that chick could totally get a get a job at my job. You know what I mean? She's got some powerful, beautiful energy. And, um, God, there's just so much suppressed energy. And, um, you know, I'm just going to call it out, okay? I have black friends. And, like, I know that there's, like, people who are extremely racist and who will, like, find great offense to this. And then there's other people that are laughing at that. You know, be like, God, that's so stupid. Yeah, I know. I know. But I do notice where, like... The black or like you know the darker skin the olive the native the indian you know the other part of my bloodline that you don't necessarily see in my blonde hair you know what i mean like i can see that essence being like like trying to be like uh brainwashed manipulated controlled and conditioned and like i want to call upon more uh dark skinned people to come to the spirit i guess you could say or, or not to the spirit because they're already there but i guess to doing the service to doing psychic readings and to be open in your communities that like this magic is there and the ancestors and i know it's in the lineages i know that we talk about it but how much are you living and breathing and embodying it so that's my message for today it feels like and um, i'm thankful for those of you 
um, all the women are coming to mind, all the women who have sent me donations and all the people who like go out of their way and send me donations after watching my YouTube videos. Like, I'm so thankful for you. If it wasn't for you, like I wouldn't have the freedom to eat and to go be with my partner and to go do all this crazy stuff that I'm doing and I'm sharing with you. Like, I'm not gonna lie, Mexico is calling me so hard and I just spent so much money, but like, God, if I had a thousand dollars just gifted to me right now, I promise you I would go. I would go, I would go, I would go, I would go, I would go. And I'd like beg you, if you have the power to let me go, please let me go, please. I'm called to go work with Buffalo Alvarius to continue the work of working with 5MEO DMT. And I would love to share with you some things that are going on. And I trust that God will provide the space when the timing is appropriate. And I promise you I will videotape and I'll share the journey if that's what is called for, you know, the medicine, if that medicine is needed. But I think there's something much more deeper going on. I feel like there's one of you out there right now who actually can afford to do this for me right now. And like, um, honestly, it feels like you're just hungry to serve. Like you feel really empty. You're really hungry. You have all this money, but you're miserable and you want to do something good with it. And you want to know that you're doing something good for the whole. Please know that I'm not being selfish, you know? And like, like you can, I hope that you can see that. And just know that I also am being selfish because if it wasn't for my own personal suffering, how the heck could I understand and know what you're going through? For example, I don't believe I'm someone who can exceptionally help alcoholics. I haven't been an alcoholic. I've been around alcoholics and I can understand the path of addiction, but I don't know what it's like to really, really crave a drink besides feeling a hangover. Did you know a hangover is actually the withdrawal symptom of alcohol? Joe Rogan talks about this successfully. I believe he discussed it inside his interview with Dennis McKenna. Did I say Dennis? <laughs> um, come on, the other McKenna. I, I'm blacking out his name. Is it Dennis? It's Terrence McKenna's brother. But that interview is phenomenal. And I'm at the tip of the iceberg of it. I still have a lot to finish in it. And, man, I'm learning a lot of things about Joe Rogan that, like, are kind of, like, scaring me about Joe. Like, Joe, do you know about your bloodline? Do you know how you're being used by the media? Do you understand why you're being given permission? Like, do you understand what's really going on? And do you really want to heal? I know you got to go to the Vatican, but man, I'd love to really help you in a whole completely different way. And um, I know it's not easy. I know you got these demons, and man, I'd love to help you purge and to work with this shamanic energy. I even see a shaman for you. There's a couple different shamans. I know you're infinite resources, you know what I mean? So like, it's not about money. It's about you actually putting in the work and wanting to heal. Um, feel free to send this to Joe, or I don't know if Joe actually has any way of hearing this, but I know we're in six degrees of separation. But um, I got a lot of love for Joe. I see what you're doing. I, I see that your higher self has the intentions of doing something greater, but I also see some other stuff going on that I really question, you know what I mean? Like working with these uh, eugenics and um, this anti-aging stuff. And like, I mean, and working with Elon Musk. I mean, I mean, I know there's a lot of great opinions and I know there's a lot of great desire, but there's also a great need for a man not to play God, you know what I mean? Like, like man's really messing stuff up. I believe Elon Musk even talks about how like, it's kind of like mandatory for us to put our consciousness into, into this hive. And um, I'm not liking it. That's all I'll say, I'm not liking it not liking what I'm visioning, I'm not liking what I'm seeing, I'm like, it's just uncomfortable, it's very uncomfortable, um, but I just feel like it shouldn't have to come down to this, okay, I think that we can save humanity and appreciate our bodies and appreciate animals and appreciate the planet in a much different way if we can just freaking, like, just take some little time to fucking talk and to think and to come together and just understand what the fuck's really going on, okay, and like, God, this makes me think of like an emoji of Joe that my dad showed me, like, like talking about how like Joe was saying this skit of something, like how everybody's acting like they know what's going on. You know what I mean? Like, do you know what's going on? Like this neuroscientist and like all these different scientific people, like they have this wisdom and all this stuff and everybody acts like they know what's going on. But truthfully, nobody knows what the heck's really going on. And like, um, but yeah, at the same time in our core, if we close our eyes and take a breath, like a deep Wim Hof breath, right? We'll tap in and we'll know, actually, I do know. And I don't want to have to accept that I know. And that's why I'm running away from source. I'm running away from myself. And I'm constantly in this habitual doing and thinking, feeling, and being. And which is why we're constantly here on this planet. And that we're having these, like, epigenetic um, resources and things going on. Um, oh, I'm very thankful for the internet, okay? I've watched, like, a lot of... Um, like worldly science affairs i guess like they're i don't know what they're called okay my boyfriend actually showed them to me but that's just one thing that i'll contribute to like my access of intelligence but honestly the internet has been a great vessel even though it's like it's a tool used to hurt humanity that um ai artificial intelligence or it information technology i know it has a mind of its own and 
I'm thankful for those of you who have been following me throughout the whole process. Like I can feel some of you who have actually heard my AI song and really been with me through my channel. And um, if you're new, like feel free to like really skim and really go way back through my channel. You know, there's a lot of hidden stuff. And sometimes I try to create playlists and you know, it'll help if the, if the viewers would leave comments and be like, hey, this really needs to go on this playlist or whatever, you know, so that other people can find it and stuff like that. Or you can build your own playlist and stuff like that. And uh, even make a playlist of Trina or whatever, you know, you feel called to use your channel, you know, like for people to find playlists and stuff like that. Um, you might be holding a lot of space, you know, like maybe you want to create all underwater videos or maybe you want to access all my stuff where I talk about psychedelics. I don't know. Have fun. That's all I'm, all I'm hearing is tell you to have fun, okay? I want you to have fun. I know I'm schooling you on a lot of stuff and the source is using me in a very particular way. Um, Today was really intense because of the mediumship, okay? Like I access a whole nother level of being able to connect to the dead. And I didn't like it, but I loved it, but I didn't like it. I, <laughs> there's all these different emotions. My inner kid is just really overwhelmed. My head feels like it's gonna explode. I'm so filled with information and um, I'm containing all this stuff. Um, so much going on, okay? Um, honestly, I'm gonna need to go to Mexico a couple times. It's about $300 round trip. And um, Mexico is just one of many places that I'm called to go. I need to go to Oregon. There's a lot of things going on, a lot of places. And some of you can feel that, like, you know that I need to travel and experience some of these things. And, like, Spirit in you is telling you to tell me where I need to go, like, listening to the untethered soul. Like, there's a lot of different things. I would love for ZTM to listen to the untethered soul audiobook. I wish that we could listen to it together. Um, but I have no control, right? You know what I mean? Like, I'm just holding space and information and accessing the consciousness. I call this Krishna consciousness, where I'm like ultimately connecting to source and focusing on God as much as possible, the energy that is God. Dude, Babaji goes so deeply into this stuff. I would love to read the book out loud. Um, I think I want to do that. I'm pretty sure that this is safe. It's an old textbook. It's a spiritual practice. And if I connect to the energy of Babaji, I can feel him crying and filled with joy how he would want these messages shared. So I'm willing to, you know, take accountability for my actions and um to also just do what i feel is necessary you know what i mean um it's just how i've been living my life and um man i'm really excited to share some of these teachings with you because they just touched my soul and they just changed me in such a way i might have to go back with my book and highlight and to really like process again you know before i read out loud and stuff like that because i might totally break down crying while reading the stories but maybe you need that genuine energy you know maybe i should just start off from scratch and, and um, work with that um, this book is available to you. Um, it was like $100 to be honest. This book is really old. Um, I'm really into buying old books. So some of you might notice some books on my wish list that are like pricey or like some things that don't make sense. And I'll leave commentary. Like sometimes I'll say, please buy this book used. You know what I mean? Some books are like 92 cents. So if you can check out and buy it used and send it to me, please, man. I want the book, but also read the commentary. You know what I mean? Like, like, um, like, the, like the person that you're purchasing from directly will tell you like, yeah, this is used, but this page is missing and this and that. Make sure I'm not missing any pages. Make sure the content isn't, isn't destroyed. Make sure it's a good, it feels good. You know what I mean? That like, it's not a destroyed copy that's not wet or that, um, it's not tattered. Or, you know, I mean, it can be to some extent injured and, and worn or used or read, you know what I mean? Um, but to another extent, um, it's different. You know what I mean? Um, so I apologize if I have created any trauma triggers or generated anything, but I'm also thankful for those of you who have allowed me to plant these seeds of ideas inside you and for you to connect in this way. Um, I usually like to say like, um, whatever the number is on the video, like what time it ends, I'm like, send that much money if you like this video, like a dollar per minute. You know what I mean? That's what I'm asking at this point. I'm asking for a dollar per minute. And then, yeah, if you can afford more and more power to you, you know, back to my web camera girl stays, man, I was charging five bucks per minute and it wasn't just nude. So I know my worth and I know I'm worth that. And there are some people that I'm going to feel called to charge that rate, to be honest, because their energy is just so intense and they're not doing the work. So I'm going to like tax them you know what I mean <laughs> but also know that it's not me like spirits gonna tell me and I need you to like understand and to love and to grow it, it's so complicated just know that source is trying to reach you and is using me as a vessel and I'm not the only one that's all I can say Ooh, I'm not the only one no I almost missed my jam almost missed it but not today I hope Chelsea's here I don't think I have a feeling Chelsea might not be here Oh no! Is Chelsea really not here? Oh no! Let's find out. I love you. Hope on the bottom. Jab on.